少年录。Good news, everyone！ 这是六七六五一七八六。Welcome to Twentieth Century Boy. My name is Ronald McDonald, and this is the inside of my mind. Didn't plan that. That thing at the top there, where I like held the welcome. I'm sure you heard it. It was about 15 seconds ago. Uh, feel free to press the. Previous 15 seconds on your podcast app, if you'd like to hear again. Didn't plan that. Totally happened off the top of my head. No planning. And that is the kind of improvisational genius. I repeat, improvisational genius. You can expect to hear on this show, 20th Century Boy. My name is actually Radio Mike. Welcome to this podcast. This is a AV log, an audio visual blog. About my life as a 26-year-old human being from Melbourne, Australia, trying to make his way through the rough and/or tumble, generally bloody both, of living life. And、uh, well, the, the, I actually when I always say that at the top of every show, the rough and tumble. Like, yeah. And、uh, what is the rough and tumble? I get the rough part, but what is the tumble part? Is that like? When people say rough and tumble, like the rough part, I guess, is when times are tough. You, you'd think it would be like. The rough and easy, but it's rough and tumble because, like, when you think of a tumble, again and again, I didn't plan to talk about this, but here we are, and again, this is what you can expect from this show. The rough is the hard part, so I, and the tumble you would think are the parts where you're falling, which is also the hard parts. So I'm not really sure about that. I really am not sure about that. New set. If you're watching the video versions, which go up on my YouTube channel, Radio Mike.、Uh, New set. Well, it's a very similar set, except the wall in the background is now blue, and I'm noticing that the light that is in front of me behind the camera gives me the ability. It is casting a shadow behind me. So if you're using the video version, if you're watching the video version, I can do shadow puppets. So I'm doing some shadow puppets. That's a little incentive to、uh, check out the. Video version on YouTube, doing some shadow puppets.、Uh, I did move back, as I've been talking about over the last few weeks. I have moved back to my parents' place for a little while,、uh, back in Q here in Melbourne, which is a nice little area, and、uh, it's been fine. It's very comfy and cozy, but I am still, I am already looking at new places that I can move to, and、uh, hopefully, I will move in the next few months. But、uh, yeah, it's been fine. the、uh, The setup of everything, like a lot of stuff, has just gotten lost in the move. Like I'm sure it's somewhere. I just haven't had time to find it. For example, the 20th century board, which usually sits right here and features all of the goals of the show, it is it is gone missing in the move. I know I unpacked it. I just don't know where I've put it. So I'll have to find that hopefully for next week. But other than that, it's been good. I implore you all to do a 360. Your 360 is how you win this podcast, the only winnable podcast in the world. Do a 360 on the spot right now, wherever you are. And if you happen to see me in the flesh, you win the podcast. Congratulations! If you did, there is a prize, but the podcast also ends forever. It is a risk reward. But here we are, another episode, and、uh, I guess a lot of developments last week. Last week was a big, big week in my life for some reason. I.、Uh, Predominantly, many of you, or some of you, I guess, would listen to the Luke and Lewis podcast, which is a podcast、uh, by Luke Kidgel and Lewis Spears, which I used to work on when it was a radio show, and、uh, they told a story about me and me doing a big poo.、Uh, I did a big poo at my girlfriend's house. I guess when you're in a when you're starting out in a new relationship, there's always this weird thing about. Poo and big poos. You don't want to be doing one. We all have that little poo shame around our partner, and I did one, and I was very embarrassed. And now Luke and Lewis talk about it on their show. I go listen to it, and nearly two hundred people messaged me on Instagram saying, "Heard about your big poo. Hope you're feeling better." Now that's huge,、uh, almost as huge as the poo. So thank you to everyone who messaged me about my big poo. The other thing this week that was huge, almost as big, probably bigger than the poo,、uh, the TikTok. The radio mic TikTok, and if you're if you're not on it, get on it now. We are now over five thousand followers because I don't think it's hard to get followers on TikTok.、Um, 
I have more followers on TikTok now than I have on Instagram and I've been on Instagram for ages. I haven't been on TikTok for long. Uh, we went viral this week. We went viral. By we, I mean a clip of me and Sammy Garlip from my other podcast, Harry Potter and the Boys. We went viral, which is awesome. How did we go viral, I hear you asking? Good question. Uh, it was a clip of me and Sammy Gallup telling a story of a boy who vomited at a school assembly. I might, uh, look, I've, I'm going to have to put it in here because it did go viral. It got, it's nearly on 400,000 views on TikTok with over 100,000 likes. Do you actually remember at our school and you were a few years above me, it was at an assembly and possibly at the worst time. Is it like Remembrance Day? We played oh. the last post, oh, which no. is like this yeah. beautiful trumpet piece. And it's like a tribute to all of the people in, in the war who died, right? Yeah. We're at assembly, big like conservative private school. This is a huge deal. While this lone trumpeter is playing the last post, one student in front of the whole school vomits everywhere. While the last post is playing, you can't just interrupt the last post. <laughs> which is a moment of silence and reflection. So basically, this kid vomits twice on the floor in front of the whole school and everyone's just like, oh my God, what is going to happen here? Mike, do you know why I remember this? It wasn't you, was it? Because I was the one playing last post. No, you weren't. On the trumpet. No, you weren't. I was. Do you play trumpet? No, you weren't. I do you play trumpet? Shit, you not. Well, not anymore. <laughs> that taste scarred you. <laughs> and you know what happened? Everyone in the school was like, vomit Trump, vom Trump. <laughs> now that is huge. That is just another level of viral. So that was really awesome. And then we did a couple, uh, and oh no, I should say that is now my most successful TikTok of all time. Sorry, not even TikTok. That is now the most successful thing I have ever done online. I have never done anything more successful online than that. So I have reached a new record today, uh, not today, this week, which is which is pretty serious stuff, guys, and I hope we're all happy about that. Get on the TikTok. We did another one that got up to, like, 60K, which was another Harry Potter and the Boys clip, but it was about J the James Brayshaw rave with Jack Post. And Pat, who is one of the producers on this show, well, the producer of this show, uh, he's doing a great job with all of the TikToks and reels and stuff. So uh, good on you, Pat. Well done for, for doing all that stuff. It's been really, really good. Just on the note of that TikTok with Sammy Garlip, lots of comments. Obviously, the the thing, the school assembly where someone vomited was an Anzac Day assembly. And Anzac Day is obviously, um, you know, quite an important day in our in the Australian and New Zealand year. It's where we commemorate the fallen soldier soldiers in the Australia and New Zealand Army Corps, Anzac. And uh, we remember them. But apparently, according to many, many comments on that TikTok, uh, it is very common for people to faint, vomit, or die during an Anzac Day ceremony. Radio Noons Cooper, welcome to the RF. At our school, someone fainted in the moment of silence at the Anzac Day service. Uh, pretty serious stuff. Lo lots of comments. Uh, Radio Rocks Cos. The guy playing the trumpet messed it up, so me and my friend spent the minute of silence trying not to laugh. The guy playing was a teacher, by the way. You would expect that a teacher would know how to play the last post. A lot of people also very angry, especially Radio Michaela and me. Welcome to the radio family, Radio Michaela and me. Over a thousand likes on this comment on the TikTok. I, I told the story of, of Sam playing the last post on the trumpet. This guy's commented, trumpet piece, it's called a bugle, bro. Well, I'll tell you what, Michaela me, Sammy Gallup was playing it on a trumpet. He didn't play it on a bugle. And you can play songs on any instrument. Just because it was originally performed on a bugle doesn't mean that it always has to be. You could play the last post on the piano. You could play it on the guitar. You could play it on any instrument. Music is music, bro. Anyway, that was a very popular TikTok that did very, very well. And I'm very happy with the growth of the TikTok. Let's get up to 10K. That's our mission, getting up to 10K. Uh, a new segment that we launched a little while ago, uh, and this, I'm not sure if this classifies as one of these, but uh, let's let, let's do one of these. Radio Mike presents... The best of James Brayshaw. 
This kind of relates to uh, the TikTok I said before, the best of James Brayshaw, where we look at James Brayshaw, an AFL commentator, and some of his uh, best commentating moments. Most recently was a clip of him just saying sausage over and over again. Sausage! Sausage! Basically like that. And uh, we later found out that sausage is what a goal is called in AFL. Did not know that. Very, very cool. Uh, also, that's another one that went viral and was shared. A real version of that was shared on Instagram, uh, on the AFL memes Instagram with a quarter of a million followers. So I actually bumped into someone today and they were like, hey, I saw you on AFL memes. And I was like, cool. Of course, one of the only things that I've ever done to be shared on a meme page of a quarter of a million followers is AFL related. My specialty, of course, AFL. Anyway. Uh, someone left a message at one 800 353 And uh, look, I don't know who you are. You didn't leave a name, but I'm just going to play the message. This is what was left. Sausage! So it is someone saying sausage. So this, you know, I don't think this is James Brayshaw from the segment doing this, but I guess what's happened here in this situation is Someone who listens to this podcast, and thank you so much to all of you for doing it, and welcome to the Radio Family. If you are not already a member, this person, whoever you are, whatever your name is, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, I think this person that's left this message has mistaken the segment, because on this show, we have a lot of segments that are like, submit your own, like Pondering Like Kermit, you submit your own Pondering Like Kermit. Uh, This movie that I think you'll like, you submit your own movie that you think people would like, right? I think this guy, whoever you are, he thinks that the best of James Brayshaw segment is a segment where you ring up and just leave a voice message doing a James Brayshaw impression, which is which is why we've gotten this. That's not what the segment is. This is not a bring your own. It's not a BYO segment. It's a B B A E. Bring an existing. You bring an existing James Brayshaw moment that you find funny. That's what this segment is all about. So thank you for writing in. I appreciate it. But uh, you have not really done what this segment is specifically about. Uh, So please send in James Brayshaw moments that are funny, not your own iterations of them. Okay, we need to follow up on something from last week. This segment. Ooh. Just uh, made a little mistake there. This segment, this segment is called this. Lost in translation. Okay, lost in translation. One of my favorite old segments on the show. We brought it back last week for the first time in 2021. This segment is simple. I take a lyric from a famous song, any song. Let's think of a song right now. My Sharona. My Sharona. I put the lyrics into Google. I translate it between 20 different languages and back to English. That's the lost in translation part, right? That's where it gets lost in translation. And I then tell you the lyrics to the song. Like I tell you, hey, these are the lyrics that Google spit out. What was the original lyrics? And therefore, what was the original song that I said? Uh, Last week, this is what popped out of Google Translate at the end. I want to be good at being able to do this. It was my biggest problem. So a pretty difficult one. And I did give the clue that this is not a very... Well, I said that th- that most kids who grew up in the 90s would know every word to this song. But this song was, was never, ever featured in any top charts or like top pop music charts or got any radio airplay. So I guess you got to start thinking, why would lots of kids from the 90s know what this song is? Like, what what is it about this song that 90s kids would know? And uh, only one person submitted it correctly. Uh, that person was Radio Whitey. Welcome to the Radio Family, Radio Whitey, longtime listener of the show. Appreciate you being part of it. Uh, he got the answer correct because the answer... To this week's Lost in Translation, the lyrics that were whatever it was, I can't remember, I'm not going to play it again, the lyrics translated, were translated from, Whitey, what was your guess, mate? Nah, it's pre-recorded, but I'll play it anyway. Hi, Radio Family, Radio Whitey here. I just think we get to this week's Lost in Translation. I'm pretty sure the song is the Pokemon theme song. Yes. Uh, Specifically the lines, I want to be the very best like no one ever was. He is correct. It was the theme, the original theme song to the Pokemon TV show, this one. I want to be the 
very best Like no one ever was dee, dee, dee. To catch them is my real test To train them is my cause Do do do. It was that uh, why would 90 kids know it? Because every 90s kid watched that show, but it was obviously not a pop song that everyone really, really liked. Well, well, it was just, yeah, it was a theme to a TV show. It wasn't like a radio hit or anything like that. So there is that. Uh, we will do something different next week, but uh, if you ever want to submit for a Lost in Translation, always feel free to call the podcast hotline, which if is... If you've got a contribution to the podcast, there's only one number you see. Nice. 1-800-438-353 for anything you would like to submit to the podcast hotline. Guys, something big is about to go down. And uh, if you've been following the podcast for a while, you will know that one of the key rules of the show is don't block the MDF. Don't block the MDF is the show's most important rule. What is the MDF? When I was a university student, I used to work at a liquor store, Dan Murphy's in Q. Behind the first register was a rectangular box on the wall, like a metal box sealed into the wall. Written on that box was don't block the MDF. We assumed that that box was the MDF. We can never really be sure about that fact, though. We really don't know whether or not that was the MDF. Now, essentially... We never blocked the MDF. We did not want that MDF blocked. And uh, when I say we, I am referring to both myself and Radio MDF manager Harrison, who worked with me at that store. And he assigned himself, while we worked there, he assigned himself the MDF manager of the store. He was really brutal in ensuring that the MDF was never blocked, which is a very important thing, as I'm sure you are aware I think at the very beginning of 2021, we started the MDF Managers Worldwide Initiative, where we wanted all of you to apply to become an MDF manager. A lot of people did, and uh, we interviewed one of you, Radio Scooter. Welcome back to the Radio Family, Radio Scooter. Uh, And Radio Scooter from the UK was initiated as the first international MDF manager of his local area, I think of Buckinghamshire, over in the UK. So we were trying to get a team of MDF managers all around the world, which is clearly very important. And uh, Harrison at the time was living in California. He was being, he was supervising the USA operations of MDF unblockage, but now he has returned to Melbourne. And uh, I caught up with him the other day and we had a chat and, uh, I decided that I think there is something that we need to do here in Melbourne, and that is why he was called to come back by the MDF union. And the reason was that radio MDF manager Harrison, uh, we need to we need to do something. We need to do something big, and we need to do it very soon. As you know, there are now the Don't Block the MDF stickers, which you can purchase at radiomike.com.au and put on your local MDF, right? To make sure people don't block it. And uh, I want to take that a step further. And that's why when I dropped Harrison home the other night when we got a beer together, here's what was said. I am currently in the car with MDF manager Harrison. How are you, Harrison? I'm good, Mike. Thank you for having me back again. You have relocated to Melbourne after some time in the United States looking after the MDFs there, so welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it wasn't necessarily a welcome back. It was it was purely for business. Purely for MDF unblockage? Yeah, it, it, correct. I actually wanted to pose something to you here in the car. Look, MDFs are are being blocked around the country. What is the most famous MDF in Melbourne, would you say? Well, it has to be the MDF at Dan Murphy's in Kew, uh, behind Register 1. Which we are cur- we're currently actually, just as a fun fact to the listeners, we're currently probably a, a two-minute walk away from. Yeah, correct. 
Now, it's obviously most famous for having Don't Block the MDF written on the MDF, which most stores didn't even take that initiative. Would you agree? Yeah, it was something we wanted to you know, address, but no other stores did take that initiative. So here's what I want to put to you. As you know, we currently have the Don't Block the MDF stickers, which our listeners are encouraged to buy and put on their local MDF. And as an MDF manager, I also would like in, to implore the, enli- the listeners to purchase these. I I want to do a sting operation with you. We're both living back in Kew, the area where we both used to work together at this Dan Murphy's. Mm-hmm. I want to get one of those stickers on the local MDF. Let's do it. All right, so in the next few weeks, me and Harry are going to go incognito to Dan Murphy's queue, and one of us is going to get the Don't Block the MDF sticker on the MDF. I'm excited for this opportunity. Let's talk more about it in the coming weeks. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. There you go. So that is on the cards. Now, I guess we need to, we really need to think about like how this is going to work because I guess I said in that we were going to go incognito and I don't know what that means. Like, do we wear fake moustaches and stuff? But I think what we want to do is basically, I, I walked past and I know that the manager who works who manages that store is still the same guy who was our boss. Who's a great guy, Nick. Um, But I don't know when he works, but I've been walking past and I haven't been in the neighborhood in like two years. So I've been walking past the store and just looking inside and I haven't recognized any of the stuff. So I think, you know, in the five or six years since I last worked there, there has been a full turnaround of all staff in the store. As far as I can tell. Um, So I guess the plan is for me and Harrison to go in, buy something, right? We go in, we buy something, we sort of scope it out. And then while one of us makes the purchase and distracts the reg, the cash, the cashier, uh, the checkout chick or the checkout bloke, the other person, you know, just kind of wanders away, wanders away from the till, you know, just sort of steps aside walks towards the MDF with one of the stickers, quickly and quietly peels the sticker off kind of behind their back, just sort of puts the sticker on, leans against the MDF, flattens the sticker onto that. And then we, you know, give a little thumbs up to see, yep, the MDF sticker has been placed on the MDF. And then we both just act like nothing's happened. And then I guess the only thing for me, the the only thing that I can... uh think of like is everyone at that store because like you know a fair few people listen to this podcast but I would still say that we're a pretty niche podcast and this community is pretty niche so I don't think I don't think there's anyone who is going to like anyone who works there like sorry everybody who works there will see the sticker like undoubtedly they will all see it and all of them will be like what the hell why has someone just walked into the store and put a sticker on this thing that says don't block the MDF and the sticker also says don't block the MDF. Like it would be just so confusing to everyone that this specific thing at this specific store, someone has gotten a sticker and put it on that says the exact same thing. The only person that will know what it is, like if Nick sees it, the store manager, he will instantly know what it's about. He will instantly know it's me. So I guess I'm just hoping that Nick isn't working that day and we just put the sticker on and wait and see. And I guess the week after, me and Harry have to go back and see if the sticker is still there. But the way I see it, we're doing a service. We're make, they've written don't block the MDF on the MDF. We're doing them a service by just putting a sticker on. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes. It could be a massive failure. It could be a success. We really don't know. Um... But yeah, guys, I guess it's just, it really is just about not blocking the MDF. And I think that's the most important thing. So I implore you to head to radiomac.com.au, get your own Don't Block the MDF sticker, really important. Uh, Go into your local shop or anywhere that has an MDF and just chuck the sticker on it so everyone knows not to block it. That is the most important thing. Over the last few weeks on the podcast, a controversy has been brewing, I suppose, uh, and I don't really know how to solve this issue. Uh, Well, I do, but anyway, I will just go into it. Basically, over the last few weeks, uh, Radio Shooter, 
And welcome to the Radio Family Radio Shooter. Different to Radio Scooter, who was mentioned before. Radio Shooter. And Radio Shooter, we have this segment on this show that's called This Movie That I Think You'll Like. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. The, the segment works like this. Uh, it is based on the Vance Joy song, Riptide. There's this movie that I think you like. Uh, this guy decides to quit his job and heads to New York City. Basically, I asked the question on this podcast, what is that song? What is the name of that song? Uh, sorry, yeah, what is that movie? What is the name of that movie? And uh, we very quickly found out the name of that movie is Midnight Cowboy, a film from the late 60s, I believe, that um, is apparently a bit bit strange in its subject matter. I don't know. Um, I will say just on the TikTok as well, that rave was also made into a TikTok that also went very viral. And I think that got like, I th- I can't remember how many that got. I think that actually got in the hunt in the 50 thousands as well or something. But anyway, we did that TikTok and on that TikTok, a lot of people were commenting what movie they thought it was. And lots of people we're actually commenting the movie Elf with Will Ferrell. Like a lot of people seem to think that that movie is Elf by Will Ferrell, which I've never seen Elf by Will Fe- with Will Ferrell. So I don't know if it's that movie, but it is confirmed by Vance himself that it is Midnight Cowboy. Um, but a lot of people thought it was Elf, which is weird. Does does in, in Elf, does Will Ferrell quit his job and head to New York City? I don't know. Anyway, essentially... Radio Shooter, uh, basically in the segment, you say a movie in the form of that song, uh, like a cryptic clue in a crossword, I guess. So I will do one right now for a movie that I am about to think of. All right. It's a movie that I watched last night on Netflix. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be actually quite hard. There's this movie that I think you like. This girl gets handcuffed to a bed and then she can't get unlocked. Okay, that's an... I watched that movie last night. It was a decent movie. So have a think about what that movie is and that can be this week's movie that I think you like. But Radio Shooter, as I said, every week he submits the movie Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. And I accused him of making a mockery mockery of the segment. I accused him of it. I said, hey, mate, you know, when you do this, you're belittling the show, you're making the show out to be a laughing stock, you're not taking the show seriously, you're insulting the show. Uh, He did this to Radio Kira's submission, welcome to the Radio Family Radio Kira, most recently, uh, and her submission was, there's this movie that I think you like, this guy decides to click his fingers and delete half the population, I, and I still maintain that I was correct, said that that was Avengers Infinity War, referring to Thanos. Uh, Shooter, of course, said it was Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, a film that I have not seen, and I I intend on seeing it. And uh, Kira then, and I do believe that Kira was kind of lying about this, but she said that Shooter was correct. It was Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Uh, I then apologised to Shooter, uh, and Shooter has uh, left another voicemail. Here is what Shooter has to say. G'day, Mike. Happy 25th birthday, mate. Thank you. Shooter here. Just wanted to call up and say thanks for the apology. And yeah, apology accepted. Thank you. Things got to be heated last week. So glad you can apologize and we can put it all behind us. No worries. Super stoked to get the win from Kira as well, by the way. Um, pretty surprised, to be honest. Haven't actually seen Mr. McGorham's Wonder Emporium. So um, yeah, lucky guess, I suppose. And yeah, I am in Melbourne and happy to accept your offer and the conditions surrounding it in regards to the Monopoly match. Um, But I'll make you a counter offer as well. If I beat you, you have to fulfill a request from me. Um, And yeah, to be honest, I've got to side with Radio Whitey on this one. Uh, Rule rule book is a much better format than house rules. Um, You know, I used to be like you and only play by house rules. Uh, But once I started playing by the rule book, I'm now like fully converted. So it's going to be hard to go back. So just, yeah, send me through your parents' address, mate. And, um, yeah, I look forward to catching up and, and having a game with the radio fan. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Lots going on in that message, as you can probably tell, and, and probably a bit of confusion there. Uh, so I'll, I'll start from the start. First of all, well, this is an absolute farce, isn't it? Because Shooter has not even seen Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. And 
wow, this disgusts me. Like, I'm sorry, Shooter, but I would like to say on the record right now to you and to Kira that I officially revoke my apology. You couldn't possibly have known that that was Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium because you haven't seen that movie. And I don't believe that that happens in Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. I will be watching it soon to verify, but I still believe that you are a liar. Radio Hamilton, a begrudging welcome to the radio family. Radio Hamilton also sent a voicemail in in support of Shooter. Here's what he said. Hey, Radio Mike. It's Radio Hamilton here. I just wanted to leave a message on the hotline to say congratulations to Radio Shooter. Mate, I knew you were going to get the question right. I knew you were going to do it. And it just took your dedication and you got in there in the end. Now, Mike, you're hating on Radio Shooter. I think you're just jealous that he actually got it right for once. So, yeah, anyway. I am not jealous of Radio Shooter. I'm angry at Radio Shooter. Now, Radio Shooter did say that uh, about the Monopoly match. Upcoming on the show, we are doing a 20th Century Boy Monopoly match because I have never lost a game of Monopoly in my life. Uh, Ever, ever, ever. Never have I lost a game of Monopoly in my life. And we are going to be playing Simpsons Monopoly because that's the edition I have. Whitey, who spoke on the show before, will be joining. Shooter would like to join as well. We are still looking for one more person based in Melbourne before we go ahead with the match so I can continue my streak. But I said to Shooter that if that doesn't happen in Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, the clicking of the fingers to delete half the population, which I will be watching very soon, then he has to wear an outfit of my choice to be revealed. Shooter obviously says there that he would like to have uh, a counter offer that if he beats me, I have to fulfill a request for him. I agree to that. But listen, listen here, Scooter. Shooter, sorry. <laughs> shooter, not Scooter. Specifically not Scooter. Listen here, Shooter. I'm on to you, mate. I know what you're doing here. You got Kira and Radio Hamilton on your side. Who's fighting for Mikey? I want to see some support from the radio fam for Team Mikey. I want someone writing in, leaving a voicemail saying, hey, sh- Shooter, is it sh- it's Shooter. It's not Scooter, Shooter. Shooter, you can't keep making a mockery of the segment. It really does feel like you are trying to cheat the show. You're trying to make a mockery of the show and now you're trying to cover up any evidence of it. And you've got your little group, the, the trio of terror, as I have now dubbed you, Got your little troop, your little trio of terror, you, Kira, and Hamilton working together to discredit me, essentially to gaslight me, which is an abuse technique. So there you go. Um, And I'm looking forward to this Monopoly match so I can wipe the smile off your face while you wear a costume of my choice. Really excited for it, Shooter. I'm going to get you, bitch. No, I don't usually say bitch on the show, but here we are. Next up. (laughs) Uh... A few weeks ago, I was really concerned because a certain best friend of the show hadn't gotten in contact with the show for some time. Uh, But I'm very, very pleased to welcome back to the show this segment, which was supposed to be monthly in 2021, but uh, this is the second time it's appearing in month five of the year. Here it is. Hey, Radio Mike and the uh, podcast family. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. That was supposed to happen in the segment. It's this. Listen up. It's Radio Nacho Cheese's Little Lectures. Yeah. So Radio Nacho Cheese, the best friend of the show, uh, anonymous tipster of the show, used to send in a weekly update. That eventually became a monthly update. Is now still a monthly update, but we've changed it to his little lectures. He just gives the listeners of this podcast some little lectures on different things that sort of happen, you know, just different little, little lectures, essentially. Uh, The last little lecture we got, and the first, which is what caused a lot of this concern, was about a haunted bar or tavern in, I think, regional Victoria uh, that Nacho Cheese was teaching us about. And then, mysteriously, we didn't hear from him for months. I thought he was eaten by a ghost. I genuinely thought that Radio Nacho Cheese was eaten by a ghost. Thankfully, he was not. Thankfully, Radio Nacho Cheese was not eaten by a ghost. He did appear in the 100th episode a couple months ago. He is okay, but we still hadn't heard from him for a while until now uh, where Radio Nacho Cheese is here to give us an update on everything that he has been up to 
with a new little lecture as well. Uh, so thank you so much, Radio Nacho Cheese. It is fantastic to have you back. In fact, welcome to the RF. Radio Nacho Cheese is the best friend of the show. We love him so much. So it is my pleasure to receive this message from him. Hey, Radio Mike and the uh, podcast family. G'day, Nacho. It's Nacho Cheese here. I know. <laughs> uh, just a quick update yep. for my last little lecture about the Clarkfield pub and the possible haunting or haunting Could of uh, the place. Yep. So I went there, had a meal, went out in the sort of car parky stable area where apparently, you know, things can get uh, paranormal. Mm-hmm. However, didn't see anything or okay. feel anything. So I'm going to have to say that this one was not haunted slash haunted. Good to know. Um, so yeah, we can put that one to bed. Great meal, but uh, a little bit eerie, but n- not haunted. Uh, for this little lecture of May, I'll just quickly tell you guys that, did you know, snails can sleep for up to three years at a time. Now this can be because the moisture in the soil is not right for them to be awake so yeah if the snails aren't digging the way the that the soils are you know acting they'll just have a three year sleep no big deal that's interesting um also i had something else to say and i can't remember so it's gonna have to wait till the next time that i call okay anyway guys uh much love and much love to you mike Uh, have a good one everyone bye-bye an amazing message because one we find out definitively that the pub, the tavern, is not haunted. He wasn't eaten by a ghost. We did already establish that, but now we have more evidence to suggest that that is true. And also that fantastic tidbit about snails. Like, who would have thought that a snail could sleep for three years? Like, imagine imagine being a snail and you've got an appointment next week, but then, like Narch said, the soil in the ground isn't good, so you go to sleep for three years... You wake up three years later. Oh my God. When, oh my God, I'm late for my appointment. Oh, when's your appointment? Oh, this date. That was three years ago. Bam. You basically travel. It's like you've been in a coma. I can't imagine sleeping for three years. That'd be crazy. Like I'd love to do it, but the wastage of life would be that that is the downside. Like if there is a downside to sleeping for three years, it is the waste of life. But I guess the upside is being able to sleep for that long. Um, Nacho, it's great to have you back. We will speak to you in June. Uh, guys, we're just about done for this week, but we definitely need to do a little version of this. The plug. This is the plug where I plug everything that I would like you to check out this week from my content catalog, my CC. Uh, First and foremost, I was on the Hamish and Andy podcast last week. Uh, and of course, the Remembering Project, I pop a, pop in on pretty much every episode. That is every Monday. But the official Hamish and Andy podcast, I'm back talking about Pokemon again, which is one of my favorite things to do in life. Uh, let me play a grab from that. Mike, who works on the show here, who's known as Professor Mike to Sonny in our family because he <laughs> Mike knows so much about Pokemon. Yes. Can we get Mike in? Actually, yeah, get Mike I'd in. Love to get Mike in. <laughs> Um, Mike's just coming in now. Professor Mike, how are you? G'day, guys. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, uh, Mike is known as Professor Mike in our house, Andy, because I don't know if we've talked about this on the show before or not, but Sonny has a book of all the Pokemon. It's like an encyclopedia. Yeah, I think you mentioned and this. Have we mentioned this? And, and then Mike found a mistake in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't think I heard that. You didn't hear that, no. right? So we call up Professor Mike when we have questions about, like, right. oh, what does this Pokemon evolve into? And I'm like, well, Professor Mike will know. What was the thing that you found, Mike, that you were like adamant is a fault? Because I sent it, I sent Mike a picture of this thing in the book, going, oh, what's this mean? And then Mike's like, that is a that is false. That is incorrect. One of the the each Pokemon has a type like fire, yeah. electric, water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One Pokemon had a type that wasn't a type in like right. it just was so and like, I said no that's wrong Sonny. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was like finding a footy card like for the AFL yeah. and and it was like, you know, our buddy Franklin plays for the peanuts or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that's yeah. not a team. Yeah. That's yeah. not a team. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was a lot of fun. Love doing stuff on that show. And uh I a lot of people have been asking what was the fault? What was the Pokemon? So I will uh I tried to simplify it there, but this is essentially what it was, uh, and Pokemon fans will probably immediately understand this, but um, in the game's Pokemon Sun and Moon, I believe, there was a new Pokemon called, and it's one of the weirdest named Pokemon, 
the name of the Pokemon is type null. Type, like the word type, then a colon, like a dot dots, null, N-U-L-L, type null. Now, in the book that Hamish had for his son, it was Pokemon name, type null. Type, right? So that each Pokemon has a type. As I said, Pikachu is electric. Some Pokemon have two types. For example, Bulbasaur is grass poison type, right? And there are uh, 18 types, I believe, currently in the Pokemon games. Uh, Normal, water, ice, electric, fire, grass, poison, fighting, ground, rock, dragon, fairy, steel, dark, ghost, psychic, uh, ice, did I say? There's two more, whatever, that's most of them. And under type null's type was the word null, which is not a type. So it basically, it looked like someone had just copy and pasted the name type null and then pasted it in the type section. If you don't know Pokemon, this probably wouldn't make sense. But basically, type null's type was listed as null, but that's its name. Its name is type null. Its type is normal type. So that's for Pokemon fans. You will understand that. Uh, anyway, after that, Harry Potter and the Boys, my Harry Potter fan fiction podcast, is migrating to a new YouTube channel. Search on YouTube, Harry Potter and the Boys. I'll also put a link in the show notes for this episode. Um, that uh, is because the the Harry Potter fanfic on my normal channel was tanking the channel. So I'm just going to make a new channel for it. So please check it out there. And uh, last week, producer Pat was on the show who does an amazing Hagrid impression. Uh, and Pat was uh, critically acclaimed for his Hagrid impression on the show. Uh, we learn of Hagrid's newest catchphrase, which is, aren't you happy, Sam? Uh, which was really funny. And, and Pat does it much more justice than me. Tomorrow on the show, Harry Potter and the Boys, Sammy Garlip is back for a fourth time. We talk about going viral and uh, that's a lot of fun. So that's a very bingeable series. Go binge that series. Uh, My YouTube channel, Radio Mike, go and check that out. Lots of videos going up there every week. And uh, I also made a playlist of, a, a Spotify playlist of podcast appearances, like me appearing on other people's podcasts. So I've started compiling that. If there's any that I've missed, let me know. But I will also put that in the show notes. If you want to like hear me on other people's podcasts, uh, please go and check out that playlist. And of course the Patreon, patreon.com slash radio mic. You can, sub- you can uh, donate as little as a dollar a month. You get the exclusive, the mics bonus podcast, with a, which is a lot of fun. And paypal.me slash it's radio mic. If you just want to do a one-off donation that goes a long way to helping me continue to make this podcast for free uh other than that i would like to finish the podcast by saying that my name has been radio mike this podcast has been the inside of my mind don't block the mdf ever uh i am a very kind young man and some of your older staff could learn a lot from me uh don't lie to me because i'll see you there is definitely more of these that i'm forgetting make sure you finish your farm project and i will see you in the dream factory later catch you later guys thanks for listening (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.